Hi, welcome back. How you doing? Uh, today's a beautiful day and I'm looking at that, looking out the window with the sunshine and the birds singing and what else could you want? Today I'm going to show you how to make chicken fajitas gluten free. Um, this is one of our favorites. In fact, Tex-Mex or Mexican food is our, one of our favorite foods. We fell in love with it when we moved to California in 85 and I have to have it all the time. Anyway, I'm going to make my fajita seasoning. I've already added the, the seasonings to save time. And I will list the seasonings at the bottom so that you can uh, have them. Now, a lot of things are optional. I know maybe you don't have all this stuff in your cupboard. Don't worry about it. Make your own. Leave stuff out. Put stuff in. Just be inventive. But the most important things you need for fajitas, fajitas? Fajitas is chili powder. 2 teaspoons, 1 teaspoon of coriander, 1 teaspoon of cumin, 1 teaspoon of onion powder, and 1 teaspoon of garlic powder. And my recipe calls for oregano, smoked paprika, paprika, dried cilantro, salt, pepper, tablespoon of brown sugar, and a couple teaspoons of um, mustard. I like Dijon. If you don't have the wet stuff in your refrigerator, use dry mustard and then a juice from half of a lime. So I've already made the spices up. I'm going to make a marinade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add probably a quarter of a cup of olive oil. You can also add water. You can also add uh, the oil in your cupboard, the veg vegetable oil or canola, whatever you have on hand. Okay, now I'm going to add the mustard to this. You won't taste the mustard. Trust me. You won't taste it. It's just got vinegar, turmeric, and all the good stuff in it to where it spices up the flavor. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil. It's become a paste right now. And don't worry about the oil. We're going to be frying the, or cooking these on in the skillet. First of all, I have to take my chicken, and I hate fat, so I'm going to take the fat off of it and show you how I do that. See, I just flip it over, and there's these pieces of fat, and I'm going to take those off. reason I have a paper towel here is I rinsed it. There's a lot of controversy about rinsing your chicken. Some people say, oh my God, you got to rinse it. Other people say, no, you don't need to rinse it. Why well, rinse mine? I want to make everybody happy. Just take the fat pieces off. Paper towel takes them away. Now, you have to have thin chicken for fajitas. Now, one way you can do it is pound them down with a mallet. What I like to do is just to take the chicken breast, put my hand on the top, and slice slice it through the middle. Now it's not going to be perfect. I've had some that when I slice it I hardly have any chicken on the bottom. But my husband got me a new knife and believe me it's sharp. So you got to be careful. I use my fingernails a lot to hold on to things. Look how pretty. Now I've made four pieces of chicken for the two of us. Perfect. Now what we want to do is we want to slice these into thin strips. Now I could cook these on the grill. I don't have my grill up and running yet. I will have and I will show you how to do stuff like that. this on the grill. And um, I just like the thin slices. You can cut these in half if you want to. Depends on how your kids like to eat things. And then I'm going to make this into strips. Hope you're having a good day. Like I say, with the sun shining, we have so much rain right now, but it makes everybody realize what's important by looking at Mother Nature. Now I cut those into cubes. I just 
jibber jabbering, I guess. One more piece. Okay. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. Notice that I have a piece of wet paper towel under my cutting board. That helps it not slide around when you're cutting because you have it. You can cut yourself that way. Now, because it's got chicken all over it, I'm going to put it to the side and get a different knife for my vegetables. Let me wash my hands real quick. I like to use antibacterial dish soap. I had some before the crisis, and. Uh, so I'm using that right now to wash my hands. Uh, I do have uh, I do have the uh, hand sanitizer still. I got some stuff to make it on my own too. That could be another video. Now I'm going to cut the onion. I just got a new chopper, but in this case, I want my onions in the strips. So I'm not going to bring the chopper out. Just going to do it by hand. We're going to take the onion. I have my garbage bowl here. I don't know why I'm not using it. Anyway, just make it into slices. Be careful. And then break them up. Beautiful. I think I need more. That looks good. Okay. Then I'm going to take my red pepper. I want the same thing. I want them in strips. So I'm going to take half my pepper, take out the middle. Now I've already chopped my garlic, which will add to the vegetables later when they're cooking. See how pretty the strips come out? And I do use a red bell pepper. I don't like green because the red is sweeter. If all you can get is green, it's perfect. Let me get some more. We like red onion. Take out the veins. Now again, I made my garbage bowl. I took a paper to, um, paper plate bowl, paper bowl, and put the produce bag that I got my lemons and my limes in, put that over the bowl and then I can just take the bowl out of the um, plastic and throw it away. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and eat the chicken in a half an hour. Uh, if you're not, save your, put your chicken in your marinade and um, then add a half a lime or half of a lemon or if you don't have that just use um, maybe a couple teaspoons of apple cider vinegar whatever vinegar you have in the house and um, I'm going to go ahead and stir this with a big spoon Make sure you stir it really good to get that marinade all over the pieces of chicken. And I'm going to add the half of a lime. I like to slice them like this because they're easier to squeeze. Especially for me. Now the juice marinates the meat. That's why, or the vinegar, it, the juice of the lime or lemons marinate the meat. But you don't want to leave the juice of the limes or lemons in here too long because they'll start making the chicken um, mealy, I guess you would call the name of it. Uh, beef, I think it'd be okay just to leave it in here. If you're uh, having it later on, just make your marinade and your chicken early, then squeeze the lime juice in when you're ready to cook it. Or be, uh, half an hour before you're ready to cook it. Okay, I'm going to take a break and marinate this, and then we'll show you.
frying it up. Okay, we're back. I'm going to show you how to cook the chicken. I'm using a cast iron skillet today. I like the way it browns foods. If you don't have it, just make it in a regular skillet and on your stove. I've got my electric skillet cranked up to um, eight. Now I may have to lower that down. I don't want to burn the chicken, but I want it to get a good start on the heat. So I'm going to go ahead and start the chicken in here. I had cooked some bacon in my skillet earlier and I dumped off almost all the uh, bacon grease but I'm using that to start the uh, first batch of my fajitas and um, then after that, after the grease is gone on the second batch I will add olive oil or canola oil to my skillet to do the second batch. Now you want to cook these pretty well through. Now I can see this bubbling a little bit too much. So I'm going to turn it down to 7. I just keep an eye on it. If, if it's still too hot, then I'll keep turning it down until I reach the temperature. It's not going to burn the meat, but cook it all the way through. It smells so good in here. I guess you could call this like a blackened chicken because I, the spices I use kind of turn it, turn the outside into a, a blackened situation, but that's okay. Like I said, if you don't like all those spices, you don't need to use them. Salt and pepper would be fine, but make sure that you try, try, try to have chili powder, uh, cumin, and coriander on your shelf. Like I said, I'll, I'll put the description in the bottom of the uh, screen to give you the recipe for the fajita marinade. Chances are, if you want to make a double batch of the spices without the oil, um, you can make half, uh, double it and then have half today and half some other time. How do I know the chicken's done? Well, I use this spatula or this uh, tong, and I push down on the meat. Now, I can tell it's pretty uh, cushiony, I guess you would say. It pushes down easily is what I should say. And I can tell it's still raw in the middle, so I'm going to wait for a while. I'll keep turning these. I want the chicken to be hard to the touch. This one's getting there already. Let me turn that down one more. I don't like electric stoves. I love my gas stove when I had it. Still kind of cushiony. They're all starting to get there. This one's still but you don't want to eat raw meat. Now I'm going to cook these again with the when the vegetables are done. So you got to figure that you're still going to cook them one more time. Okay, now we're going to use the same skillet to um, cook our vegetables because all the brown goody stuff in there. I'm still going to add maybe a tablespoon of olive oil. And we're going to do our peppers and onions. I'm going to add a little salt. Just a pinch. I'm going to scrape a little bit of those uh, crusty bits off the bottom. Now a lot of people like their vegetables crunchy still. 
we kind of like ours done uh, not real squishy but still with a bite to them so I'm not going to cook these for a long long well I'm not going to cook these uh, where they're crispy I've turned the heat down to four on my stove. I just noticed it was a little bit too hot. And with a cast iron skillet, it does retain the heat. I'm gonna add the chicken back in now. I'll keep tossing it to make sure that my onions and chicken are cooked. When you're cooking, don't walk away. Make sure you're there. Because you never know what your stove is too hot. If it's too hot, it's going to burn. And um, now in this case, because it's um, just going to simmer for a while, I can leave this for a few minutes, but you want to make sure you turn your handle away so the kitties can't grab it and burn themselves. When my grandchildren are here, I always have the, the handles to the side. This is sort of like stir frying a little bit. Okay, while that's going, I'm going to bring you over to this side of the stove, and I'm going to show you how to do our fajitas in a dry pan. I'm going to turn this up to, I want it fairly hot to start out with, so I'm going to put it on nine. Oh, I forgot my garlic. I peeled the garlic earlier. Let's get it in there so it can cook a little bit. Don't want to cook it too long or it'll, it'll burn and it'll get bitter. So you always add it towards the end of your cooking of your vegetables. There. Now what I have here is some corn tortillas. They are gluten free. I became pretty partial to these things because I'm kind of tired of the uh, gluten free bread. Let me wipe this thing off, this grabber. I'm going to use the same tongs. There's no sense in washing them. It's all going into one place in my belly. Okay, so this is heating up. I'll lay that in the pan. And I'll show you what happens to it and where we want it to be. I better get a plate to put them on. Now it's okay for me to put a paper plate on the stove. There's no pilot light or anything. So as long as I keep an eye on everything and don't walk away and leave the kiddos in the kitchen. Look how good this looks. Oh my goodness. We are going to eat good tonight, babe. Yeah, I got that right. <laughs> Okay, it's starting to bubble up a little bit. I like to slide it over here. It's not brown yet. There's no blackened spots or anything like that. That's what you want, just a little bit of those. I got it on nine. I have put it down to eight before if it's getting too, too brown. Not yet. Takes a little bit of patience. I'm going to go ahead and turn this burner off with the heat as I think they're done. I'll leave them sit here to keep going a little bit.
Oh, there's no. It'll it'll get there. Okay, let me show you my tortillas. Yay, they got a little bit of brown spots on them. You don't want them too cooked or they won't bend off for you. I'm going to show you how to build these. Now, you can put sour cream. You can put salsa. Anything you want, but I prefer to start out with just plain. A little bit of onions, chicken. Oh my goodness. And peppers. Now, isn't that pretty? Let me show you. I'm going to taste them. Let's see if I was a success. Ow! I try to eat stuff when it's too hot. Okay, look how good this looks. Oh my goodness. The spices, the seasoning. Now you may want to serve to your guests a wedge of lime to squirt over the top because that brings out the flavors. These are good on the grill, good in the home. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment if you have any questions. And I hope to see you back again soon. Bye.